One of the most important parts of Minecraft are its worlds. Enormous, procedurally generated and diverse maps on which the gameplay of Minecraft takes place. But these worlds weren't always so varied. In fact, they have developed organically throughout Minecraft's entire history. Today, we'll explore this development. We will begin with the first ever known version of the game, released on May 13, 2009, RD 131655. This is the first ever version of the game that we know the look of, although it was never released to the public, footage of it is available. In this version, one can clearly see that the terrain is quite uneven, torn even, with grass on the top and some sort of stone under it. Even in this version, at the absolute beginning of the game's development, the generation of the world utilized chunks. According to the description of this video, the maps at this point were 256 by 256 blocks, their height being 64 blocks. At the world's borders, one would fall into the void but not die. Later that day, Notch would release the next version, RD132211, in which the road was flattened and building mechanics were added. Several days later, the world would be smoothened further, with version RD160052 making it varied in height. This would be the last major change to world generation and reclassing. During classic versions, terrain generation slowly became much more complex. Although several of these versions are now sadly lost, there is proof by Notch that the caves began generating completely underground in 0.0.3a, the second classic version after 0.0.2a. After this version, terrain generation remained unchanged for several versions, with the next known change taking place in a currently unavailable in the launcher version. 0.0.12a. Although this version is not available in the launcher, it, it is available if you are willing to utilize questionable methods, which I did. In this version, terrain generation was majorly modified, adding water, which made the surface generate in islands and bedrock. Terrain generation starts one block above sea level in this version, making coasts and inches quite rough. One version later, on May 22, 2009, more changes were made, making the terrain smoother and changing the way water generates. Instead of large oceans with small islands, there would now be large continents with smaller lakes and one great ocean. This version is again sadly not available in the launcher, although there is a version called 0.0.13a, this is a mislabeling. Luckily the look of this version can be approximated with the next one, 0.0.13a underscore 0 t as the only difference between these versions is the fact that lava doesn't generate on the surface. 0.0.14a and all versions of it until 0.0.14a underscore 08 are unavailable, with 0.0.14a underscore 08 only being available in a different archive than the launcher. Luckily, most changes occurred in 0.0.14a itself, and the versions after it were mostly bug fixes. These changes were sand, gravel, and ore blobs, trees for the first time, world sizes from 128 by 128 to 512 by 512 and a reworked terrain generator. The footage you are seeing now is from 0.0.14a underscore 08 from May 28, 2009, but as I said, terrain generation is mostly unchanged. Final change to world generation in classic versions occurred on September 1st, 2009, when 0 0.24 underscore survival underscore test was released, reworking the terrain generation once again, making it rougher with more cliffs. 
this is a bit of a trend for classic versions, not just in the old generation, implementing something, reworking it and then re-implementing the old system. But now let's move on to in-depth versions. In in-depth versions, more changes were made to the different types of roads, not to world generation itself. In 2010-0106, a version of in-depth 0.31 from January 6, 2010, several new world types were added, those being island, which was a large island, surprisingly, floating, which was a world made out of floating islands, providing an interesting challenge, flat, which was flat, and original, which resembles the terrain of classic versions. The world could also be square, long or deep. Finally, one could choose the size of the world. Unfortunately, the closest version to this one that I was able to find was in depth 2010-0110 from January 10th, 2010, in which the original world titles were replaced by inland. This is mostly the same, but with grass on the borders, not water. Furthermore, a few days earlier, the Hell road type was added, which had a dark sky, water instead of lava, and no grass. This would later lay the foundation to the modern day meta. Throughout in depth, minor changes were made to the world generation, with some worth mentioning being making ocean water infinite, forming the foundations for the infinite water source in, in 2010-0113, the addition of diamonds in 2010-0128, adding a lava sea at the bottom of the map in 2010-0130, here I am greatly simplifying as lava sea went through many different iterations throughout in depth and the addition of the Paradise and Woods themes in 2010-02-14-2. In InfDev, we're now entering the point where even the slightest change can make roads because of difficulties with infinite roads. Well, in the first InfDev version, 2010-02-27-1, world generation has been simplified by removing sand and resource blobs it was now possible to generate enormous worlds that seemed infinite. The border only came at 33,554,432 blocks. The first generated structures were also added, the now famous brick pyramids and obsidian walls. The latter would be removed just a few, few versions later in 2010 0313. In this version, changes were also made to oceans, supposedly making them much larger which we can see in the footage. Oh, and 3 generation was re-implemented just a week later in 2010-0320. Five days later, all generation was modified to the system used until 1.18 and caves were re-added. This is interesting because most aspects of the game went through at least several more iterations throughout the game's lifetime, but all generations stayed the same until one of the largest updates to the game ever. In 2010-0327, the first in instance of what I mentioned at the beginning of this chapter occurred. In this version, caves and bricks, caves and brick pyramids were removed for the time being. The world was made smaller, with the far lands, the new border, generating at 12,550,824 blocks. And the world generation engine itself was significantly overhauled, making the worlds in my opinion at least, grander and vaster. This May 2010-0327, the first version, the roads from which are able to be opened in newer versions. In 2010-06-11, almost three months later, world generation was once again massively overhauled, making train generate in large islands and be able to generate higher than the build limit, causing it to cut off at it. In this version, monoliths could supposedly also generate, although I couldn't find any proof of this. Right, I realize that this section has mostly consisted of reading large version numbers, mentioning one or two changes and then moving on, but I promise I'll keep these few final in-dev versions short. Right, in 2010-06-16, caves and springs were re-implemented and lava regained the ability to generate naturally. 
In 2010-617-1, Bedrock began generating at the bottom of the road again, and coastlines supposedly became more gradual. In 2010-0617-2, dirt and gravel blocks were added underground. In 2010-0624, mountains supposedly became less tall, although as with the coastlines, I'm not sure of this. And finally, in 2010-0625-2, the first structure that stuck around to this day was added the dungeons. And that was in depth. I realized that it was maybe a bit boring, but now we'll move on to Alpha, which should be more interesting. In early Alpha versions, not much has changed in world generation. There were some changes to all generation with Goldwains now varying in size, but not much has changed overall. But on July 9th, 2010, with the release of Alpha 1.0.4, Winter mode was added and laid foundation to microbiomes biomes as we know them. Let's briefly talk about the world type itself. Winter mode had a 25% chance to generate upon creating a new world. Actually, when I wanted to generate this world for the video, winter mode was activated on my first world. As we can see from the footage, the entire world is covered by a layer of snow in this mode, and most of water is replaced by ice. Snow is also falling. According to the wiki, passive mobs supposedly spawned less frequently, although I can confirm this myself, partially because I don't want to, and partially because I'm really not sure of it. This is also the closest Minecraft has ever gotten to having seasons, although it is still far from that, as winter mode is permanent as well as the normal mode. Winter mode stayed in the game throughout several versions of Alpha, during which cacti and clay patches were added, but was removed just several versions later. On October 30th, 2010, one of the most significant updates to Minecraft's world generation was released, Alpha 1.2.0. In this version, a new world generator was implemented, adding biomes. This led to the removal of winter mode and the creation of diverse worlds. The Nether, the Hell Road die, brought to perfection, was also added. It was quite simplistic, which it remained until 1.16, but it uh, was a welcome addition nonetheless. But let's swiftly mention how biomes used to generate in this version. As biome generation changed a lot throughout the game's development, we we'll sometimes discuss at least a bit of technical details about it. Biomes used to be generated making use of two pearly noise values, temperature and humidity. Pearly noise is a gradient noise that assigns every point a decimal value between 0 and 1 and is quite useful for procedural generations. If you want to play around with it yourself, there are quite a lot of procedural noise generators on the internet, one of which I utilized for this video. These values would later be converted to a 0 to 100 value. From this, one is able to create this graph, where we have rainfall, which is humidity, on the y-axis and temperature on the x-axis. The pearly noise values would then be placed on the graph and voila, we know what biome to generate. Here, one is also able to see what biomes were actually added. The rainforest, the swamp, the seasonal forest, the forest, the savanna, the woods, the taiga, the desert, the grass desert and the tundra. I discussed several of these in detail in my video Minecraft's Move Biomes from March 10, 2021. The actual differences between the biomes won't be as drastic as today, commonly only changing to grass color. The biomes were also quite small, sometimes even smaller than a chunk, which could lead into some bizarre situations. The final change to world generation in the game's alpha was implemented on December 3rd, 2010. In alpha 1.2.6, where lakes, both water and rare lava lakes, gained the ability to generate. We have finally reached the beta versions of the game. For the first few beta versions, no changes were made to world generation, or at least no noticeable ones. 
in January of 2011 as part of beta 1.2, spruce trees began generating in tigers instead of oaks and birch trees began generating alongside no oaks in normal forests. In the next few months, several beta versions have been released, most making minor changes to the generation such as sandstone, which began generating under sand and deserts in beta 1.3, or patches of ferns, grass and dead bushes in beta 1.6. Beta 1.8 was released on September 14, 2011 and was, relative to the number of features in Minecraft before this update, one of the largest updates to Minecraft ever. Among many, many other new features, a lot of changes to world generation were made. First, the way that the world generates was overhauled in two significant ways. One, more biomes were added and some were removed. Two, the way in which height was determined changed. Let's start by talking about all the changes to biomes. Up until this version, biomes generated using pearly noise, a now algorithm which we already talked about. This left some biomes too small and others too large. This needed to be fixed, and that was done by generating biomes using fractal noise, which is essentially a combination of several and Perlin noises. Using the resulting fractal noise, the biomes are generated. I will now mention which biomes were removed, added, etc. The old savannas, shrublands, rainforests, seasonal forests, and tundras were removed. In their place, however, oceans were added as separate biomes, not as generated structures as they were before. The same goes for extreme hills, tigers were added, and swamps were added. Next, let's talk about how height was determined in this version. Here, I will mostly be basing my explanation on this incredible blog post by Alan Zucconi. Height is also determined by fractal noise, but how it does so is quite interesting. It starts off at world height, 255 blocks, and goes down in a column, matching fractal noise values with the column. The highest point in that column will be the block on which the fractal noise is equal to or above zero. I forgot to mention uh, the fractal noise with which the aforementioned is resolved is a combination of three pearly noises. A low noise, which is low resolution pearly noise, main noise, which has higher resolution, and high noise, which is the highest resolution pearly noise. As the resolution increases, the contribution of said pearly noise to the resulting fractal noise decreases. Height is also ad adjusted by the biome in which it is. Some biomes have a maximum height, which modifies the fractal noise. I also want to briefly touch on caves. They're very briefly. They generate using a variation of pearly noise called pearly worms which is modified pearly noise made to cut out chunks out of a larger piece of it. Rivers supposedly also generate using this method. Finally, four new generated structures were added, those being strongholds, although without use at the time, villages, mine shafts and ravines. Farlands were also removed. This terrain generation is quite beloved by the community, mainly because of its ruggedness and weirdness, which is absent in later versions. Between beta 1.8 and 1.7.2, not much has changed in terms of actual world generation, but quite a lot of biomes were added. The first actual release of Minecraft 1.0 added the end dimension. There is not much in terms of generation here, as the end is just a single island at a time, but to this addition, nether fortresses and a portal room in the strongholds were added. In 1.1, snow began generating in tigers again, as the temperature changed from 0.3 to 0.05. This is, I think, a good time to mention what effect temperature and humidity now have on biome generation. From beta 1.0 on, temperature and humidity serve to determine biome tint, categorize biomes, determine minimum height for snowfall, determine whether it is possible for precipitation to occur in this biome, etc. One can look up temperature and humidity values on the internet easily. This means that taiga's temperature was lower, therefore all rain turned into snow automatically in this biome. 
The Superfly drone time is also added in 1.1, reminiscent of some of the first micro versions. In 1.2.1, jungles were added along the, with the variation jungle hills. Desert wells were also added to deserts. In 1.3.1, emeralds, desert permits, desert specific villages and jungle permits were added. Some of the settings were also modified to make hill and mountain variations of biomes more rugged. The final addition before 1.7.2 was the addition of swamp huts to swamps. It's time to talk about 1.7.2, one of the largest updates to the game. I have been dreading this section of the video, but now that I look at the wiki, it's not so bad. So, let's get started. Several brand new biomes were added in this update, those being the savanna, the badlands, the dark forest, the birch forest and the mega taiga. On top of that, many biomes gained variations, such as the flower forest for the forest, the deep ocean for the ocean, etc. This was the main change in this update, biomes were divided into many, many different variations. Another addition was the changing of, bi of biome elevation to make it more varied, making biomes more rugged, like in beta 1.8. The final noteworthy addition was a change to caves, making them less interconnected, which they remained until 1.8. Continuing on from 1.7.2, ocean monuments, diorite, and descent, and granite blobs, and the customized world type were added in 1.8. In 1.9, the bland piece of shit that was the end was changed, adding end islands, end cities, and end ships. Oh, and the igloos, I guess. Uh, fossils and woodland mansions were added in 1.10 and 1.11, respectively. No changes were made to world generation in 1.12, but 1.13 saw quite a lot of changes, mainly to the ocean. Four new oceanic biomes were added, the warm ocean, the lukewarm ocean, the cold ocean and the frozen ocean. The warm ocean has corals and a sand floor, the lukewarm ocean has a sand floor but no corals. The cold ocean is the closest to oceans before this update, having a gravel floor. And the frozen ocean has a gravel floor and icebergs floating on the water level. All of these vines have kelp growing in them. Several new structures were added, those being the shipwrecks and underwater rooms. In 1.14, villages were updated, now having more variants and more detail. Pillager outposts and bamboo jungles were added as well. In the next update, no changes were made. In 1.16, one of the game's oldest features, the Nether, was overhauled, gaining four brand new biomes. Let's look at each one in detail. Crimson forests are forest-like biomes with red trees and a red floor, thus the name Crimson. The biome is dense and its fog is dark red. Piglins and Hoglins spawn here. Warped forests are forest-like biomes with blue trees and a blue floor. The biome is less dense and relatively safe, since only endermen spawn here naturally. Its fork is purple. Soul sand valleys are plain, like dry biomes with fossils spawning naturally. They are made of soul sand and soul soil and have a cyan fork. Ghasts, skeletons and endermen spawn in it naturally. Basal deltas are volcanic biomes. They are mainly composed of basalt and black stone, with large spires of these blocks being covered. The terrain is jagged and they are quite dangerous. The fog is a dull color and gas and magma cubes spawn in it. The original nether is now known as nether wastes. For structures, ruined portals and bastion remnants were added. Ancient debris and thus netherite was added as well. Finally, gold began spawning in the nether, making it easier to survive in it. Although some caves and cliffs features were made available in 1.17 in some world types, I am going to ignore that and, as the update is split, I am going to focus solely on 1.18. In this update, many new biomes and structures were added, and world generation was changed completely for the first time since beta 1.8. Let's first focus on the biomes, caves and structures, and then we'll discuss the improved generation. Caves were remade in this update, getting a new generation algorithm which works similarly to before with 3D pearly noise, but has more variety, 
creating three types of caves, cheese, noodle and spaghetti. There are also large caves that generate from time to time. This is aided by the extension of the road height limit to 320 blocks to 320 blocks up and minus 64 blocks down. These cave types are overlaid as well with new cave biomes consisting of lush caves, a surprisingly lush biome with water, clay and grass-like blocks, dripstone caves, a biome full of stalactites, stalagmites and stalagnates, and the deep dark was also supposed to be added but was moved to 1.19, along with structure, the ancient city and archaeology. Tying into the caves, all generation was remade, encouraging exploration of said caves in place of strip mining. A new ore, copper, which serves to... Um, hmm, uh, exist, was also added along with amethyst geodes. Under the Y coordinate of zero, stone would also be replaced by deep slate, which acts like stone but takes longer to mine. Mountains were not forgotten about, now being made out of five sub biomes which are on our list. The meadow is a plain like biome but taller, it often serves as a border between high mountains and normal land. The grove is a tiger like biome but again uh, taller and the snow covering its land instead of grass. This biome commonly serves as a transition between mountains and forested normal biomes. The final biome which generated the slopes of the new mountains are the snowy slopes. Here we can see snow, powder snow and stone. Goats can spawn in this biome. There are three peak biomes which generate at the absolute top of the mountain chain. Their type depends on the surrounding biomes. The jagged peaks, perhaps the most common, generate usually if there are temperate biomes nearby such as forests, dark forests or plains, etc. The frozen peaks generated of the surrounding biomes are cold, like the tundra or the ice spikes, and are less jagged and smoother than the jagged peaks. The final variation are snowy peaks, which generate if there are warm biomes nearby, such as a desert, a mesa, or a savanna. Snowy slopes are commonly absent at the slope as they are not snowy. But how does this all generate, you may ask? For this, I'm once again going to utilize Alan Zucconi's splendid blog post along with the Minecraft wiki. Minecraft terrain from this version on generates using six parameters, five of which are fractal noises. Those are temperature, humidity, continentalness, erosion, weirdness and depth. Of these, depth is not a fractal noise. Temperature and humidity serve only to generate biomes, based on this graph. This is pretty similar to before, only being different and that apparently more temperature planning is applied to make the biome smoother. Continentalness serves to determine how far the terrain is from the ocean or if it is an actual ocean. This serves to determine which biome to drain and how high the world would be. The higher the continentalness, the higher the average world height. On the screen you can see a table that I created using the wiki. We can see which biomes would generate in which continentalness ranges. So the lowest will correspond to the mushroom fields, values between minus 1.05 and minus 0.455 corresponds to deep oceans, values between minus 0.455 and minus 0.19 correspond to oceans, values between minus 0.19 and minus 0.11 correspond to coastal biomes, etc, etc. I am going to leave this chart on the screen for the remaining duration of this segment as with the temperature and humidity graph. Erosion serves to determine road height. There is not much to discuss here, since it is mostly a simple noise function. Weirdness is used to determine several things. Biome subtypes, such as the bamboo jungle for the jungle and the new mountains. Uh, the variants of biomes are not very discussion worthy, as it is quite simple. The higher the value gets, the weirder the biome becomes, but the new mountains are a bit more complex. Using weirdness values, one can calculate a PV or peaks and valleys value, which then serves to determine the previously talked about mountain biomes. This value is calculated using the formula 1 minus the absolute value of 3 times weirdness times the absolute value of minus 2. The resulting values are again placed on a scale from minus 1 to 1, where the biome which generates is determined by the value on the scale. 
you can see another table on the screen. If the PV value is between minus 1 and minus 0 0.85 valleys we generate, which are low biomes usually between mountains. If the PV value is between minus 0 0.85 and minus 0 0.6, normal biomes will generate. If between minus 0 0.6 and 0 0.2, meadow or similar biomes will generate. If between 0 0.2 and 0 0.7, slopes will generate. And if between 0 0.7 and 1, peaks will generate. This also serves to slightly alter the world height, although supposedly not as much as erosion, which serves to only do exactly that. Depth is simpler, as it is not based on noise. Depth serves to determine whether a surface or a cave biome will generate, again based on this table, which I didn't create this time, this one's from the <laughs> wiki. It increases by 1 128th every block down. When between 0 0.2 and 0 0.9, cave biomes will generate. When close or equal to 1, surface biomes will generate. This is to prevent a lush case biome close to bedrock. And when close to 1.1, the deep dark will generate. As this is the last time we'll be talking about world generation more technically, let me mention how the nether and end generate. Nether biome generation is similar to overall biome generation as it is based on temperature and humidity. You can see the exact values in this table. The end uses a different system, but it is just as simple. There is only one function used to determine the four different end biomes erosion. If the biome is further than 1024 blocks from the main island, the function takes place. If it is closer, the biome is simply the end, as it was before 1.9. You can again see the exact values in this table. While not much has changed in the last two biomes in terms of terrain generation, some new biomes were added. The Deep Dark is a cave biome made of skull blocks which generates at the absolute bottom of the world. It is dark and the ancient city is generated there. Wardens spawn there. Mangrove swamps are a variant of the swamp biome that seems significantly denser. It is made out of mangrove trees, dirt, mud and water. Frogs spawn there commonly. The two preceding biomes were added in 1.19, although the Deep Dark was planned for 1.17. The following biome and structure were added in 1.20, although archaeology was again planned for 1.17. The cherry grove is a variant of the grove biome that is generally the same as the former but has cherry blossom trees mixed in. The final change to world generation on this list also occurred in 1.20, the Tales and Trails update, in which archaeology was added, and with it came trail ruins, a new large generated structure which spawns underground and consists of terracotta and the new suspicious blocks. You may have noticed that I have been ignoring or at least not mentioning world generation in the bedrock versions of the game. That is because the only differences between it and Java Edition are the fact that Pocket Edition was developed much more slowly, only getting the end for example in late 2016, while the same feature had already been available in Java Edition for several years or the Nether in mid-2015. As of Bedrock Edition 1.2.0 however, the rogue generation in these two versions was merged and made largely the same. The wiki article I'm basing this video on even says that it is equivalent. Minecraft has one of the most complicated procedural generation systems in video game history. But as we saw in this video, it took a lot of time to build up to what it is today. Many iterations it has been through, from simple 256 by 256 block worlds, through a limited biome system to what we have today, this incredible world generation that makes Minecraft what it is. I would confidently say that world generation is Minecraft's strongest aspect.